Hi, everybody. We're the Skeleton Crew, and we know that there is a new trailer for Prehistoric Planet 2 that just came out. We appreciate almost every single one of you bringing it to our attention. Um, we didn't have time to record a video uh, for a while just because we were all doing stuff, but now we have time to finally watch the trailer together, and that's what we're going to do today. Before we get into it, uh, for maybe the last time, we're going to introduce ourselves. I'm Dr. James Napoli. I am a postdoctoral research fellow at North Carolina State University and the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. My name is Amelia Seatlow. I'm a PhD candidate at the American Museum of Natural History. And today I'm joining you from the void. I am a scientifically rigorous artistic representation of what we assume the vertebrate fossil preparator and technician at the Harvard University Museum of Comparative Zoology, Scott Johnston, would look like. This is not a dream. We are using your brain's electrical system as a receiver. We are unable to transmit through conscious neural interface. You are receiving this broadcast as a dream. Hi. That's it. That's it. I'm not going to introduce myself. I'm just going to do the Prince of Darkness line. It says who I am. You know who I am. <laughs> this man is Alex. Rubenstahl, in fact. I go to the same school at Dalton where we do the same thing. Use context clues to figure it out. I'm not gonna We're the same person <laughs> across two different times. I've never seen them in the same place at the same time. I always see them in the same place at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> His dreams. It's not in a dream. Home. I am as it's been implied, Dalton Meyer, a PhD candidate at Yale University, a man beset by pollen. Because <laughs> I, someone told me New Haven has like the highest amount of pollen anywhere right now. And I, I believe it. It's just ridiculous. Okay, should we watch the trailer without yeah. any further ado? We should indeed. Right. So are we going to watch it through one time first and then go back? Yeah, let's do that. All right. Let's watch it once. Join us for Prehistoric Planet 2. Sixty-six million years ago. Turtle. Planet Earth was ruled by dinosaurs. Both majestic and extraordinary. The mysteries of their lives have been largely undiscovered. Until now. for a journey like no other where there's always more to experience and more to discover explore five new worlds filled with danger and adventure help them is Prehistoric Planet 2. Only on Apple TV+. Plus. Well. So, cool. so my reaction to that is that that was the trailer for Prehistoric Planet 2. A lot of little guys. Which I, I enjoyed about. seeing the first 20 seconds of it before my video froze and I didn't see the rest of it. Well, I'm mm -hmm. going to keep it kind of looping in the background. That's fine. Until, we can do it. We're going to we go through it. Go through it. Frame by frame. Absolutely. <laughs> frame by frame breakdown of this. So I noticed something. Yes. It's 66 million years ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are they ever going to show us the worst single day on planet Earth? I don't think so. Are they? Go they're gonna. Are you think? Are they gonna end a dinosaur documentary that set 66 million years ago with the asteroid? That would be a very brave and controversial decision. I have never seen that before. It means something something new, something fresh, something funky. What if Adam Driver's there? 
I have. He is. You just he's off camera. He's the can cameraman. We just, can we just make a special cut of this where he's just crudely photoshopped into the background of <laughs> shot walking around with the gun? I think there is some intentionality behind making this documentary and not doing the asteroid at all. And I think that may have been baked into it from the beginning, which is like we're going to show dinosaurs alive and we're going to just show like life as opposed to the ultimate death. We're going to show a trillion babies die, but we're not going to show so Armageddon. many. Right. It It is something I like about the show, honestly. You know, it, this is just kind of a cultural perception thing, but I feel like it's baked into a lot of paleontological work is like, we know the dinosaurs die. Yeah. But they didn't. No, think they the fossils are from animals that died. But you know what I mean? We They didn't know that they were going to go extinct 66 million no. years ago. And so, you know, the ecosystems were rich. I don't know about that, uh, James. Every species can smell its own extinction. Some of them. Boom. <laughs> right. Two John Carpenter references in the video right, so really far. Third. <laughs> there was one individual dinosaur that knew that they were going to go extinct. No one else believed it. But that one was in the Jurassic. <laughs> well, they've got them framed in a picture, you know, I... somewhere. Someone does. Yeah, so, so I guess what I'm saying is I enjoy the fact that the documentary doesn't treat it as a foregone conclusion that they're going to go extinct and that none of this will exist anymore and lets them like, lets it be shown as a world that's alive, mm -hmm. not dead. Um, that said, I'm suspicious about the specific date of 66 million years ago. Me too. Just, given some other things that have shown up, but that's beside the point. Well, what do you mean? I mean that they've said by name animals that weren't alive 66 million years ago in well, some oh, of the Velociraptor was alive 66 million years ago in my heart. I don't mean <laughs> Velociraptor, I mean Hesperornis. <laughs> that too, yeah. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so we've got water. We have the long distance shot. Sucker for Scott, pause it. Uh, can you go back to the long distance shot, Scott? We promise back. viewers this one will be shorter than the last one. So this is Tarkia. Um, Tarkia? Is it tar I've always said Tarchia. I, I, I've always I, said Tarkia. But... I've always said Tarkia. I've always said Tarchia. Well, Amelia, Amelia, how have you always said it? I would say Tarkia. Hey! Okay. Tarkia. Um, beautiful shot. Did it really live in a desert like this? It did. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Um, it lived in the Gobi Desert. It was a desert then, too. That's why it supports so many huge animals. Cool shot, though. Oh, yeah. it's stunning. Yeah, I mean, listen, I have my quibbles about the way they've portrayed the Gobi paleo environments, but at the very least, they seem to be showing a lot of diversity within Asia at the time. Mm -hmm. We can get into some other stuff with that, um, but that's more a sunlock that's neither here nor there. Let's let it advance. We got Word. Hachigopteryx again. This, I want you to pause Okay, on. this is so good. Except there's well, one thing I God. don't like. <laughs> Except for the things I hate about it. It looks great. Cheeks. How is he going to eat? Um, <laughs> well, you see, the food is going to fall out of the sides of his mouth while he masticates with his Ooh. highly advanced and evolutionarily derived chewing apparatus. James, I can't say that. This is a family show. I know. <laughs> I love. I know. I know. We're. I know. We're complaining about the lack of cheeks, but I do really like that. Like, what looks like a serangular, angular. Osteoderm or something? Yeah, this all like patch. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen I, that before. This is, I mean, I, cheeks aside, this is the best Pachycephalosaurus that's ever been. Yes, like correct put on the screen. Is he wide though? We can't see him from the front to see if they got the 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 barrel business. Hopefully, and I think there was a out, still like, of it from the front when they're fighting each other, and it appears that they barreled it pretty we, nice. We at least see Pranocephaly later from the front. Okay. We do, and it's actually good that this comes first because this, at this moment in the trailer, is the best Pachycephalus story ever put to cinema. Mm. <laughs> but it doesn't hold that title for more than about 30 seconds. No, it doesn't. I um, like stumpy little arms, too. It's so so... They're really stupid. So, and do I, we know what this is? This is Pachycephalosaurus. Mm -hmm. Proper. Which one? Proper. Wyomingensis, probably. I think they're going to call it Pachycephalosaurus in the show. Okay, but it's not supposed to be like a growth stage or something? No. Well, I wonder. I no, know. it's got a pretty... Like, I think they just added keratin to the nodes. 
No, okay. but I, I'm I'm wondering if they'll like make a comment in the show of just mm. like this it, is a it, this is a young male. It has you can tell by the longer horns. An adult male has shorter horns. Ah, okay. I hope they don't make a comment. I really hope they don't. I really hope they don't too. But listen, if they know what's good for them, they won't touch it with a ten foot pole. (laughs) They don't know what's good for them. No, as as we give them one of these. Intimated. They're they're not omniscient. (laughs) I think we mentioned it in our last video, but it bears repeating that like this came out. Like if this program had gone into development just like a little later, it may have been able to catch on to some really, really cool upcoming Pachycephalosaur research, but... Oh, man. Oh, well. It's frustrating, but, like... Yeah, what a... Such is the nature of the field. You're never gonna, you're never gonna catch it. All right. Yeah. Let's continue. I love, I love the way it's walking slow. I like the scrubland environment. It's something you don't see a lot in dinosaur documentaries. It's kind of, like, dryish brushland. I like like it. I wish the Gobi were depicted a little bit more like this. Mm. There's a lot of grass. With vegetation for animals to eat. I know. I'm just being an annoying. You know, you know what? You know what seems in the sand. What? Say again. I said, but James, we find the fossils in the sand. They must have been living in the sand. Um, well, they were actually buried in the sand. They were like sandworms from Dune. Right. Of course. Yes. <laughs> you you attracted tra- you attracted Velociraptor by the the thumper. The thumper. Yeah. The, the, A subterranean. That's how ankylosaurs summoned them with their tail. So, so you know what? Actually, speaking of the environment, this is uh, this is in. This strikes me as I wouldn't be surprised if some of the background shots are filmed on location. This is kind of just what the Hell Creek looks like today. It is, yeah, <laughs> that would be really funny. That would be very, very funny. It really is. It looks like it's got like this. It's yeah, it's sagebrush in the front. There's yeah. that that taller thing in the back that might be the plant that like. It drops its leaves and leaves like shrivel up and look pale, and we mistake them for fish vertebrae constantly because they look exactly like that when they dry up, and you know, it drives me mad. One of my favorite things about working in the Hell Creek is walking through all that sagebrush because it smells so nice. It smells so good. It's, we were there the first so nice. time I was out. There was a it was a it was a wet uh, summer, and there was a lot of sweet clover blooming. So the smell was sagebrush and sweet clover, and I have remembered it every single day to this day and i'm sad that i've not gotten to experience it again i found out when i worked in the hell creek that i'm incredibly allergic to sweet clover oh you're one of those (laughs) you know what's even better than that scott what finding out you're allergic to rabbits while you're dissecting one (laughs) you're allergic to rabbits yeah it's a shame tragic and it's sad because i love rabbits bunny allergy Um, yeah but yeah i'm like i was helping i was not even dissecting it myself i was a ta for comparative anatomy in college and some of us had cats and some of us had rabbits so they were dissecting this formaldehyde preserved rabbit and so it's the smell of formaldehyde making me tear up plus rabbit dander that's aerosolizing as they're cutting and skinning it and i just could not go anywhere near half of the room that had the rabbits i had to like stay all the way on the other side and i was miserable the entire time it was fun so did you have Um, to work with the cats and find multiple ways of working with them no, no, no. They opened the lab by saying there's many ways to skin a cat, but today we're going to do it like this. Hello, Ooh. a dingosaur. Ooh, yeah. we're seeing all that's known of this animal in real life. Oh, <laughs> yeah, let's go back a little bit. More, more, <laughs> there we more, go. There's more. Most accurate right there. representation. Of the put the screen. Ooh, damn. All right, I can do another good tweet with this. Hey, look, everybody, yeah, it's could. an anixaurus. <laughs> um, this is slightly more than what's known of the animal, though, because we have the sidewall of the maxilla and so just a little chunk of it. Yeah, that's a good um, point. Cool looking dude, so, though. So, yeah, Nanoxaurus is cool. Um, I have heard rumors that there might be more material of this that's been oh. discovered that's on its way to description, which is really nice. I don't know yeah. how much there is, but it kind of doesn't need to be almost anything to be more than the holotype, which is yep. like three fragments of bone. They're diagnostic enough, but is we don't know a lot about two? what they look like. It's a little bit of maxilla, I think, a little bit of dentary, and a little bit of frontal. I have a question. So it really is yes. just like that. Is that a yeah. trimmed hedge it's poking its head out? I think it's a rock. I think it's a rock. It's a rock? Oh, that's lichen? It's like lichen okay. yeah. It's not it's just a, it's a, a Minecraft or not. It's, it's a Minecraft dirt block. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we don't know a lot about what Nanoxaurus looked like, but I've usually seen it depicted as like an Albertosaurian type yeah. Tyrannosaur because Same. we used to think that it was Albertosaurus up there. Um. I kind of like that they're showing it as more T-Rex-like in skull profile with it being 
bigger and more robust because Nanoxaurus seems to actually be quite a close relative of T-Rex. A bunch of old documentaries so, just, or, or a bunch of old paleo media just straight up refer to, uh, like, show it as Gorgosaurus. Like, uh, March of the Dinosaurs, uh, that documentary, and the yeah. Walking with Dinosaurs 3D have it as Gorgosaurus. Right. Yeah. right, exactly. And it just turns out that it's a more derived Tyrannosaurian thing living up there in the Prince Creek. So, it's cool. That's cool. I like it. Onward. And upward? Yeah. And upward. Upward? upward? Let's go. Uh, upward. Upward. Uh, upward. Oh, yeah. It's got we, lips. Oh, my we, God. Well, yeah. speaking, speaking of the lips, can we advance this like three seconds? Oh, like, yeah. It opens its mouth and it's unclear. I think it's just the way it's opening its mouth makes it look like it's kind of like uh, clearing its no. lips. No. But... From, from looking, looking at how that's animated, it looks like it's kind of peeling lips back. Hmm. Look at that. Just a little short. Yeah, here's a, here's perfect. a hot take. I think that's probably there, there's there's probably some mobility there. So I I don't think it's likely that there was anything similar to like mammalian style lip mobility, just because that's such a unique yeah. thing. Yeah. But like I don't know what the true mobility of squamate lips are. Where I am, my understanding is that it's kind of just a soft tissue band around the mouth that can there, like move a little bit. There's one kind of a, at least one agamid that like can. <laughs> bear its little fangs <laughs> it's really stupid looking what do, do you have can we can you what do you remember what it is so we can share a picture uh, because it's hilarious let me let me let me do a little bit of googling we do some uh... shut up about lips shut up about lips while we're looking up this thing does anybody know what this critter is oh that's a good point anaxaurus no this animal here i think these are the dread nodises maybe this doesn't look like dreadnoughts. So they can't be dreadnoughts. Well, they, the dreadnoughts are it. walking in a in a place like this. It could be the uh what is what's it? The what's the Indian sauropod? It's what not Isosaurus. It's not telling me what it's called, but I need to interrupt. Look at this idiot. Hold on. Unless it's my blur is going to mess it up. Your blur is your blur is I like the little heads. I'm going to we'll flash it on screen. That's very good. He's a very good guy. Yeah, I'm. I'm sending the hump nose lizard to our Facebook chat. Nothing can... but joy. Could he be? Could he be Alamosaurus? We're having two completely separate conversations. Ooh. I just realized. I'm talking. Yeah, yes, we a hundred percent are. Um, possibly yes. it is in kind Great of like content. almost a coastal maybe environment. Like I could see those bluffs being kind no, I'm, of coastal. I mean, if I'm we're going ninety percent, that's what they are. They're Alamosaurus. Uh, you think? I pretty because sure, I, I think you see either in this trailer or in some of the ancillary material, we'll discuss a f more full body view that shows that this is the same coast that the T-Rex has the carcass on and that it's these same bluffs. And also they have Al Alamosaurus osteoderms. So I... Oh yeah, it does have a row of osteoderms on the back of its neck, on the back of its head. Yeah, there. Oh yeah, you can see those. I mean, you're both wrong. Because this is, from what we can see, Either Sarmientosaurus or uh, <laughs> God, what's the other one called? Diamantosaurus. Yeah, or, or Tapuiosaurus. The only like the three Titanosaurs, where you know what the head looks like. Right, because it has the head, it must be one of those. Mm -hmm. Yes. Please only show Alamosaurus from the neck up and from the neck down. It can be like the parents <laughs> in Dexter's Laboratory, not Dexter's Laboratory. <laughs> uh, I that joke. God damn it. It's okay. Let's move on. It's moving on. I like it. I think it's a yeah, handsome but... young man. So speaking of good and handsome now, animals, beautiful, beautiful oh my boy. God. God. God, I'm so excited for this. Well, I... this is confirmation that um, the creators of Prehistoric Planet watched our previous trailer reaction, heard what we had to say, and redid the entire show to conform to what we asked for of them. <laughs> yeah, that slaps. That's so cool. Yeah, this is... Uh, I'm oh. very sad a little bit that this wasn't in season one. I'm very like, sad a lot. Oh my god. This tiny, this tiny horned twink on the left is about to get destroyed. <laughs> this is this is such a, a, a f***ing virgin Giga Chad meme right here. <laughs> yeah. Oh my you god. versus the guy she tells you not to worry about. I do dig that they give the big one like a slightly asymmetric horns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
a nice detail. Yeah. Again, I, I'm a sucker for variation in ceratopsian horns because I think there was more of it because of keratin. Yeah, yeah. I would say that it it looks like for this guy specifically, um, I, I saw a lot of comparisons online to um, uh, really big tusker elephants. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I always found super interesting about elephants is they actually they'll favor a side of curling their trunk and they'll favor a side of using their tusks. So they can be right or left trunked or handed. And the fact that this guy's left brow horn is significantly shorter and more worn than the right one, maybe they're implying that he's left horned, which is cool and just something we see in animals. You know what I like? <clears throat> what? I like how big his horns are. Yeah, me they're too. huge. They're extremely big. Um, so I guess we should bring up what this is probably based on, which is a specimen of Triceratops at the Museum of the Rockies called Yoshi's Trike. Informally, there's chatter that it might be named as a new species of Triceratops at some point. I don't know what the status of the work is on that. Um, Yoshi's Trike has very long horns. They're not quite as long as this, but keratin sheaths on biological structures are way longer than people usually give them credit for being. Mm -hmm. um, like in bird claws, they can add as much as like, I think 60% at maximum of the length. So it will be 1.6 times the length of the claw. Um, this means that dromaeosaurid claws that are often curved like this probably would have come down like this and been absolutely wickedly curved. Not a lot of paleo art shows that. So it's very possible that with keratin, Yoshi Strikes Twins were approximating this size. Um, even though it looks a little silly. Like, this looks like the anime cool. version of Triceratops a little bit. Does. Oh my god, yeah. Um, None of you watch anime, don't pretend. Uh, I'll, I don't, because we, I don't like things that look like that. We unless can, they're real. We can cut this in, in case it isn't actually published, but um, that Borealapelta paper on the osteoderms it's published it's published okay so yeah. um there was a paper that was published a while ago on boreal apelta that absolutely gorgeously preserved uh notosaur and kylosaur that if you want to learn more about you can watch our notosaurus episode of paleontologist reacts but um that one was so well preserved that the keratin sheaths are partially preserved on the osteoderms on its back and one of the things that they presented on uh, at SVP was that they seem to show that uh, the larger, what seems to kind of inherently make sense, which is the larger the bone core, the larger the keratin, but it almost seems to be like, like almost a percentage wise thing where it's like small ones have a little bit of keratin and larger ones have an absolute shitload of keratin. So something as large as the horns of a triceratops uh, I think I remember them in their presentation saying that it wouldn't be out of the realm of at least biological precedent for a Triceratops to have real life horns that are double the length of the bone cores. That's insane. Which is bonkers. Also, it kind of it, it's reminds me of a missed opportunity with the Carnotaurus. Yeah, it does. Me too. Mm -hmm. Which could have even sillier horns. Well, All right, there's that R.J. Palmer. Uh, reconstruction yeah. of it that just gives it huge horns and I'm so sad we barely see that in any other reconstructions. Yeah. This is such a great shot. I really it's love really... that we might be seeing more of a narrative in some of these clips. Mm -hmm. um, I have I have a very short criticism of that Triceratops scene and it's really not their fault and going back. it's great and it has nothing to do with the designs but it's just like I find what really frustrates me with a lot of the depictions of Ceratopsians are like in these scenes where they're just doing shit with other ceratopsians, which is cool and based and their feet look great. And I kind of like the crocky scoots on their underside, but like there is not a good idea of scale for how large these animals are. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. However they're depicted. <laughs> they're right? like, these are two elephants stuff. crashing into each other. And it's like, you could be forgiven for being like, Oh, these are cow sized. Know, a rhino or like a cow. Yeah, or, exactly. or even a pig. Right. No, I mean, Again. there are, are some do? scenes in this show that seem like the animals have the wrong scale. And I know they went to the locations with, like, life-size silhouettes to get the scale right. 
And so I don't know if they're just things that were done in error, but like the T-Rex in the river scene, based on the size of the cobbles the T-Rex is walking on, it doesn't look huge. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's possible they're just huge boulders that are forming the riverbank there and that it's just a trick of the eye without like a human or sure. something as so, reference. That's why like very tall for a Nigel story. Marvin in frame. Well, either right. that or a Stephen Fry. <laughs> right, or maybe an Adam Driver. Ah! <laughs> Adam Driver just kind of like dive rolls in and blows uh, a cannonball sized hole through one of their heads. <laughs> right. Like, I mean, Alex is exactly right. Triceratops was one of the largest herbivorous animals that has ever existed on land, um, except for sauropods. Like, those things aside, it, it is rather in the size class of the largest things alive on land today. And it's rare to get a sense of that scale. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And th- it's, this is not an issue that is inherent to prehistoric. Planet. I, uh, every other documentary with these things has the same issue. Yeah, yeah, it's just a common problem. Speaking of sauropods, oh my god, they are. sauropods! What are they doing in a volcano? They're nesting. Oh no, my god, they have airpods in. Oh, I guess they are nesting. I say they're going they're to the nesting grounds. It's, a, it's <laughs> honestly pretty cool. They, they, I, like this whole concept is is kind of rad. So yeah. what I I love as well is that like you can see talk about like. I, I know in our previous thing we talked about how we really liked depiction uh, depictions of cutting edge paleontological research. We're seeing that right here. This little titanosaur oh, yeah. has an egg tooth, and mm-hmm. well, egg tooth in quotes because isn't it a projection of like a, a bony projection from the maxilla and not a true egg tooth? But uh, what what I'm really getting at is this is based on a real fossil, and they right. did this. It wasn't yeah. Isisaurus specifically. No. But it was another well, it's titanosaur. A, it's an unnamed... Uh, actually, the CT scans for it are on the, oh. uh, the SRF. Not you. Because it's in my data set because it has a nice palette. But it's an absolute cutie pie. But yeah, so you can cute. see it's that little projection. I realize I haven't been using my mouse this whole time to circle things. Uh, it's that little projection that you see right at the end of its snout there. And we'll... I think it's part of the premaxilla. Yeah, I, so. it, I, I would imagine it's premaxilla. Uh, yeah. We'll throw up the 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 Hold CT up. scans on up. on screen because it is so cool. And egg teeth, uh, for those of you not aware, um, are something that birds and cro- well i guess pretty much all egg laying reptiles have right i'm sure there's exceptions i don't know the full distribution but i know there's some weird turtle or something that probably doesn't have it and they're they're keratin if memory serves all right so that's it's titanosaur embryo mcf dash pvph 874 where's it from uh it's argent I think it's Argentinian. Okay, so not India. Okay. No. But this is a no. a completely reasonable thing to put on it. And oh, it would have even been without the fossil. Oh, yeah, It's so cool that it reflects the fossil. Right. Record. And I guess that's the thing. Like, a lot of the time, huge discoveries in paleontology are not necessarily unexpected, but it is an exceptional fossil that is able to provide positive evidence for oh, something. That's so cool. Mm-hmm. Like, we would have been very well-reasoned and... Um, within our rights as scientists to infer that these animals had egg teeth before the discovery of this fossil. But now we know what a sauropod dinosaur egg tooth looked like. And that's really, really neat. And it looks a little different from what we see in other egg teeth, which is also cool. Right. So yeah, I love, and I, I just love the idea that these animals were using like volcanic heat to incubate their eggs. Isn't that what they imply with the Allura Titan in the last season as well? I think so. And I don't think it's unreasonable to assume that some animals would have their life history start to depend around that mm-hmm. when you've got areas with active volcanism. I think there are reptiles that do it now, but I, I don't know of any off the top of my head. Maybe well, I've, got a ghost basement, I've got replacement teeth in here. It's a good scan. I'm looking um, at the Premax last deal. Do we want to do anything with this? I, I just have it spinning. We find the copyright, and if we can show it in the video, we'll put it up in the video. All right, it's on Dropbox. I can download it at any point. So, um, these are babies. Adorable. Baby. Um, one other thing that is worth noting is that we actually know that a lot of dinosaur species did this kind of lifestyle where the babies would live in a crush together. This is something we don't see in mammals, as far as I know, in almost any cases, except in um, human juveniles go to school together and tend to <laughs> hang out in groups of their own age. That's a crush. But, 
Right. I mean, it's not incredibly dissimilar in some ways, but the idea is that you'd have a clutch of eggs that might be individ- like clutches for multiple parents hatching at the same time and forming large social groups of the babies that would live together. Um, this is likely some way to avoid predation and try to maximize survival. It's a pretty unique thing, and we know that a lot of different dinosaur groups did it, so it seems to be a pretty reasonable speculation uh, on the part of sauropods, which well, I don't know if we have evidence of titanosaurs doing it in particular. We have a huge group nesting sites. Only evidence group nesting is... sites. Right. Well, I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean they no. left in a crash later. And it, does, it doesn't imply that they hatched at the same time, but... no. It's a it's a very easy next step to make. It's a nice assumption. Right. And yeah. we know from like Pinacosaurus and Cetacosaurus, we find the same kind of thing with which are just huge baby assemblages with no adults. And other Acosaurus dinosaurs. What about right. Adrosaurus? Are they doing I don't know if we know. Okay. Yeah. I buy it. Yeah, yeah me too. So it's cool. Onward. Isn't this kind Maybe. of also done in Walking with Dinosaurs? Yeah, yes. it is, with the, mm-hmm. the Diplodocus. The Diplodocus. Cool. Amelia, it's your time to shine. Is it? Whose man's is this? We, we have a water critter. Who, whose Wait. man's is this? Um, I'm not going to make any assumptions about what it is until they tell us what it is, um, because I have no idea. I've heard some people think it's either Phosphorosaurus, Plyopleticarpus, or a Halosaurus. Mm. Um, Phosphorosaurus, or not Phosphorus, Phosph- it's either Phosphorosaurus or Pontosaurus, I forget. Um, because I'm tired and it's late, but one of them has really big eyes, like forward-facing eyes, and that's why they think, why they as in miscellaneous people online think that it could be that. Some people think it's Plyopleticarpus, uh, because also, same thing, big eyes, stumpy face. Um, I don't I don't believe this is the, the right skull shape for that. Anyway, um, and then I've heard other people say it could be a Halosaurus based on the body proportions, um, but given that the body proportions of Mosasaurus in the show have been messed up before. I don't really take that as a reliable indicator of what it is. Mm-hmm. Also, we know basically nothing about Halosaurus. Um, there's like the one relatively good skeleton from, it's from Kansas, but it's currently in Sweden of a Halosaurus. That's like the only postcranial skeleton we have because for some reason in North America, they're scrappy and the others are from Morocco and in Morocco they're headhunted. So we know nothing mm-hmm. about their crania. Um, <laughs> Anyways, I don't know what it is. It looks like a dolphin, and I low-key don't like it. Oh, I thought it was a Metriorhynchid at first. Yeah, I, like uh, I was going to say that. Uh-huh, because it doesn't uh, look like a Mosasaur, does no, it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't oh. look like a Mosasaur to me. We're going to move on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But also, so, I think uh, that's what we're saying. We're watching this on the 97th birthday of David Attenborough. Yay! Oh, yes, yeah. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday, David. Stay um, alive. Please, we love please you. Stay alive. I know you watch um, our stuff. <laughs> I've got Thanks for subscribing. <laughs> Thank you, David Attenborough, for Sir subscribing. Attenborough. You were a four thousandth subscriber, um, which means you officially get access to Alex's OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> also, check out our video about Attenboroughsaurus. True. Yes, it's named after you and not your brother, um, or your so other. Brother. I want to wait. I want to talk a little bit more about Metro Rinkids and why this isn't one. Yeah, sure. Um, they were dead by I then. Don't, right, I don't remember offhand the estimated extinction date for Metro Rankins, but they're completely unknown from the latest Cretaceous at the very least. Which also, to not they're, they're bury basically... the lead on them, they're fully aquatic marine crocodiles. Right, and they look right. a lot like They this. look like this. Yeah, so in, the, in that they have kind of like this these weird proportions, right? So like they've got a longer face, I guess, than this does because it's a croc. It's got a big long croc snoot, but they've got longer necks. Some got of long... them, some of them don't. Like a uh, dacosaurus well, yeah, actually, has a really, ones, really the short face. Kind of, the ones that kind of persist into the Cretaceous, uh, the da- the dacosaurs. Well, yeah, uh, no, kind of I wasn't prevalent. thinking. I'm having just spent two and a half weeks in Europe, I'm thinking of the long snouted... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Metriorhynchus itself. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's what I was envisioning here. But you yeah, know, like, yeah, it's... And the stumpy tail, too, and that's really what's kind of throwing me. Where it's like, okay, if if this is supposed to be a halosaur, sure, the one skeleton we have that I'm not offhand entirely sure the status of has a stumpy tail, which is odd among mosasaurs. They do typically have pretty long tails, but... Yeah, I mean... We run, we run out of these 
So a lot of Sukians in general are out of the record by like 120 million years ago ish. Yeah. And uh, that's a signal I would kind of believe because it's yeah. a marine animal and it's also a crocodile, which are the, if you want to be a fossil or the two or vertebrate fossil, those are the two best things you can be. If not right. a fish. Uh, yeah. Right. No, I yeah, mean, so, I, I don't think they were around by this point, but that was the initial thought that I had when I saw this. Is mm -hmm, that it's same. supposed to be it's that. a late surviving geosaurine? Wow. The other thing I've heard talk cool. about in the scene is that they people seem to think it's like in a cave or something, so they think it's a small species, which is also mm -hmm. why people lean like towards Halosaurus or Pontosaurus, Phosphorosaurus, whichever one of those it is. Mm. I've also, fun. I think Phosphorosaurus, but I've also heard. Maybe Xenodens, but I think it's probably too new to be in it's the show. Too recent. Xenodens was like two, three years ago. But and yeah. also Xenodens, the I'm sorry, the published Xenodens is like a chunk of maxilla that big, mm -hmm. yeah. and you'd be making up the rest of it entirely. Like Nanook. Well, that that hasn't stopped them from several. Right, I guess I suppose. And we'll, we'll get to I another can... one later. Okay. Next. Next thing. Yeah. We good? We need to sell some because I'm close to passing out because I haven't yeah. eaten. Anything. Okay. We, 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 yes, let's go. Alex, you're gonna maybe you should order. No, I have. Oh, you have leftovers. Never mind. I have all the leftovers. I'm so excited for them. This is an elasmosaur. Let's keep going. Elasmosaur. Oh, so, oh, okay. Velociraptor. It's, there. it's long. This is not Velociraptor. Well, it is in the show. It this is now. Is a Velociraptorine. Back. Elasmosaur, long neck. I, I do like the bait ball stuff that they're showing. Like that, yeah, it, that's it, always fun. It, it it's pretty. I know nothing about elasmosaurs relatively, and so I'm willing to believe anything they say. And I can't criticize the designs or appraise them in any meaningful capacity. Yes. Yeah, especially in this shot because we see them from far away and for less than right. a second. It How looks wide. neat. Um, so. I'm sure we'll go into this at some point because prehistoric planet videos seem to be doing well, so we'll probably make more of them. Um, this is so Velociraptor itself is not known from the part of the Cretaceous that prehistoric planet depicts, which is worth noting because generally they've been pretty good at restricting the animals they sample to that interval. But there's a lot of uncertainty over the age of the Gobi Desert beds that we find a lot of dinosaurs in in general. Um, dinosaur remains aren't that common. And we know that there are Velociraptor-like things that persist into the latest Cretaceous. So yeah. um, I think it's fine that they're calling this Velociraptor. If it had to be identified as anything, I'd say it's more likely Shridivi, which is a relatively recently described um, sister taxon to Velociraptor. So literally its closest relative, um, it, which probably looked almost identical. And look, Jimbo, it's in a new habitat, the same habitat it was in the first one. The desert, the yes. barren desert. It is a very good design. Like, oh, oh, it's beautiful. And I like like the red coloring that it looks like. I can't tell if it's just one? like... Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You very still cool. haven't watched season one yet, have you? I have not. Uh, that's the male. Oh, cool. So there's... Yes. Okay, that's fun. Yeah, they do sexual dimorphism with color. I like it. Mm -hmm. Tight. Next. Different Dromaeosaur. One that has got a lot of people excited. This... Wait, what is this? This, Aust this, this is Ostroraptor. Ostroraptor. Oh, you could forgive me for being confused and thinking this was a Troodontid because. Ooh, and Lagans are weird? Yeah, and they might also be sisters of Troodontids. Mm. Um, Depends on whose analysis you're going by. Um, this shot got criticized for looking kind of plasticky. The lighting's weird. Yeah. Um, but we've seen more of Ostroraptor in screenshots, and I think it looks pretty good in other things. Um, and they've got the around. conical teeth, it looks like. It does. So um, Unin Loggins are currently interpreted as early diverging members of Dromaeosauridae, which is the group that includes Velociraptor and Deinonychus and Utah Raptor and other more famous Dromaeosaurs. Um, what's weird about Unin Loggins is that they seem to be adapted for eating fish. They've got like really long snouts, really long legs, and conical teeth that I think aren't serrated either. So these are adaptations um, you generally see in fish eating animals. I don't know if there are conical teeth known in any of them be besides Ostroraptor? Um, Buitraraptor, right? No, Buitraraptor's teeth are uh, recurved, but they're yeah. Conical. I think I think Ostroraptor is is our conical friend. It's also got incredibly short forearms compared to other dromaeosaurs. Yeah. It's also yeah. really big. Yes, it's also yeah, it's, huge. It's, 
chonkers. It, it's like it's a, Utah it's raptor about size. It's 20, yeah, like 20 feet long and 6 feet tall. This is an enormous animal. I don't think it's as big as Utah raptor. I think it's big. but it, like, it's, it's in the ballpark of Utah raptor. Sure. Yeah. yeah. The, the, no need to... Yeah. yeah. We we don't want to make this a raptor measuring contest. This is actually like the worst, like not the worst shot, but like it doesn't shooting it like straight on doesn't communicate how long its face is. We'll see yeah. it again later. We'll see it again later. Don't worry. And its face will be long. Oh, it, it long. But why and its the arms face? are short? <laughs> because uh specially adapted for Pisifery. No, it's because it's sad. <laughs> no, and it's not sad. My favorite part about uh this group is that <laughs> they're one of the most ancient groups of dromaeosaurs, and their fossil record doesn't start until the Middle Cretaceous. Yeah, dromaeosaur fossil record has some problems. We'll yes. talk about them a lot, probably. Uh, <laughs> this video series is called "Me and Alex's Career." And, <laughs> um, oh, I guess they're also it's, it's a long-term project for our audience. This is a a group of dromaeosaurs that's known near. I want to say almost exclusively from the southern hemisphere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um currently exclusively from the southern mm -hmm. hemisphere and um mostly from south america with Rahnavas generally considered to be a basal unin and that's from madagascar it's yeah. back to yes. being an unin now currently. it is if you're good at uh phylogenetics right. there if, is the... if you're alan turner and kathy forrester it's an unin and we, i i believe trust that. people who yes. are those people we should disclaimer the statement that they're exclusively uh southern hemisphere by saying yes people have proposed that power after may be one but also oh, Power Raptor yeah. is known from less than the box of scraps from which Tony Stark built the first Iron Man suit. And any claims about what Power Raptor are should be taken with severe, severe skepticism. Also, it's French. <laughs> and should therefore not be counted. <laughs> all right, all right. Next. Yeah, I mean, agreed. Hey, okay, so, uh, it's hey, the best uh, Pachycephalosaur. <laughs> Look at him. As we, as we said before, um, the Pachycephalosaurus at the beginning of this video was... The best pachycephalosaur to put the screen until this. Boink. Oh my! I, I want to take a moment to appreciate the one. Oh, that's this coming is so up, good. Face on, how his eyes just kind of go from her, away from one another. <laughs> look at his like. Look it at his yoke neck muscles too. Like, like oh, yeah. okay. One of the things that always well, struck this me. This guy had butts. One, one of the things that always struck me when. I was a kid learning about pachycephalosaurs is that even the tiny ones have incredibly, incredibly, incredibly thick skulls. And that means their brain cases are absolutely minuscule. And you see all 12 of this guy's brain cells <laughs> firing at the same time and trying their hardest as he's popping up It takes up there. everything in his capability to rise up like that. And then he's the he's hardest angry. thing this animal has ever done. Do these guys have cheeks? No. No. No, okay. They're consistent. Yeah. Oh my god. Are, are they going to have a fun adventure with the big spike? They're yes. harassing it. Yes. <laughs> oh, this is going to be very cool. This I is Marginocephalian on the ray of foreign violence. It's, or not even, he's he's so mad. He's it's pocket the sanding them. It's pocket, dude. pocket sand. <laughs> pocket sand. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. I'm excited for that. That looks fun. Oh, goodness. Oh, that's just, that's this. Is what an awesome looking Kyle. Unbelievably good looking. It, it, yeah. This looks so good. The texture. Yeah, awesome. I don't know how they've done it. I just don't know how they've done the texture. I could touch. I know what this animal feels like. And it feels good. It would feel cool to run your hand along like the bumpity bumps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very satisfying. Like that texture Ooh, that they and put on like all the, the like, modern got, superhero costumes. Mm. It's got like the scoots on its forearms too. Yeah. yeah. They did such a good That's job. That's awesome. It's got yeah. the Batman like for <laughs> and, oh my god it does and it has the the kind of expanded nasal area that we see on some encounters as well oh, oh on Tarkus well, yeah I think that's yeah to kind of you know there's there's some cool stuff going on in the nasal capsule of many of, many an ankylosaur which we've talked if about it... in past videos yes we have um and you should watch them if I had more time and it weren't very late tonight. I could pull up a figure and see if the pattern of the capitulae and the skull was correct. Um, but I'm sure somebody will do that at some point, so we don't have to. Uh, we could also do it, it in looks editing. Good to me. Yeah, we could. It looks neat. Next. All right. These are, this is cool and good. I'm excited for this. And now back in the water. Okay. It's a thing. Well, no, out of the water. And now out of the water. A cool shot. It's air draws. It's doing, as I've heard it referred to as, the ocean man thing. 
<laughs> hey, Amelia, you are muted. It's a mosasaur uh, doing a whale thing again. Yes. It's doing an aquatic predator thing. Sharks do it too, so oh, it doesn't right, yeah. bother me. No, and that was some, somebody asked me after this came out if they could have jumped out of the water like that. It's like, yeah, probably, given that they propelled themselves with their tails and they were strong. I don't see why not. They move in the how water, high, which means they can jump out of it. Right, Is and how high they could have jumped, I don't know. I'm not a biomechanics person. Um, That's right. But it doesn't matter. It looks cool. If sharks yeah. can do it, I'm sure they could have done it. It looks great. This might actually be the standout shot of the new season for me. Yeah, like, same. It, it's just... This it's is a perfect prehistoric planet for me, where it is something that you don't see typically in art, but it is really cool and beautiful and naturalistic. Mm -hmm. That, to me, is when the show is at its best. And I think this is a good example, where there, this isn't a scientific question of whether this could happen, really, to me. Yeah, just look it's like... just, this almost assuredly happened at least once, and it's really, mm -hmm. really cool. I'm yeah. just, and I'm just kind of like fixated on like how the water is pouring off of its f***ing flipper. Yeah. God. It's very good. We're not, we're oh not quite God, at the way of water levels, but we're we're broaching it. They're close. They're approaching the way of water. All right, this is cool. Next I like the Plesiosaur's little diamond. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Amelia, yeah. real quick, can you give us a guess of what Mosasaur this is? I'm assuming this is the Mosasaurus again. Mm, good point. Like, yeah. the big one. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, the the hot money. Unless this is that Antarctic Plesiosaur. Yes. I, I, so unless they, well... Because that was, what was it? They, they said that Mosasaur was supposed to be Kai Kai Flu, but I remember them when they showed it, it was not bigger than the Plesiosaurs. Yeah. Like, this is behemoth levels of size happening here. Unless it's a baby. Jungus. Unless it's a baby. Unless it's a baby, sure. Um, but yeah, I was going to say a thought. Like, oh, um, the, the thing that I will say positive about their depictions of Mosasaurs in this series and in, or in this show is the behavior is spot on. Like, I really like in the first season, I think the best depiction of mosasaur behavior i've ever seen which is one of them is just jay chillin and the other one ruins its day it's <laughs> for no reason. and it's like yeah that happened they were hateful animals and like this too it's like yeah they we know they attacked plesiosaurs we have bite marks and you know gut contents of mosasaurs that include plesiosaurs so i appreciate that King shit. all right let's let's see what next thing happens um oh, oh the best shot of it's the so good <laughs> Frog. <laughs> He's mean. Okay. I, speaking of animals that are known from less than the box of scraps that Tony Stark used to assemble his first Iron Man suit, <laughs> this is Impero Bator. Ah, uh, the, the, ones behind, the ones behind. Thing. The ones behind are, I don't even remember the genus name of the ornithopod. Um, Impero Bator is claimed to be a Velociraptor relative that is huge. Like you, Tyrell. I think it's I thought it was just kind of a some kind of Paravian. Well, yeah, that's yes. part of the thing. Oh, oh you, it's, it's not you a didn't mean like okay, gotcha. Sorry. Um, it, Imperobator is almost certainly not a dromaeosaur, and I don't think that the evidence that it is um, the evidence that it's a uh, Paravian at Paravian? all. Are, is fairly weak to my knowledge uh, like there's not a okay. lot of character evidence because it's it it's is known not even three toe bones it is it is actually i'm looking at the skeletal diagram right now oh it's seven fragments it something. is seven toe toe bones the two of which are part diagram, of one bone. you mean the silhouette with three bones colored in well, so the so the foot is known from fragments of the three major metatarsals, so metatarsals two, three, and four, and then an as, like assortments of six individual phalanges. So it is not even a whole foot. It is hard to know anything about this. So it could be like a some kind of Silurosaur. It seems to be a Solarosaur. I don't know what characters pull it into being a Paravian, but I can't think of anything from the, those foot bones alone that's like a right. clincher. Yeah, and it, one, I mean, I guess... one of the key distinctions being that we know that it wasn't a Dromaeosaur, it doesn't have the big old recurve killing claw like we see in Dromaeosaurs. Right, nor does it have the modifications to the metatarsal that show you that that killing claw was present. Mm -hmm. um, so in Dromaeosaurs... It does look really cool, though. Oh, it looks this rad. Is... 
it looks great. And I was really hoping this was going to be like Dromaeosaurus or something, because that seems to be what they really modeled it on. Like old depictions of Dromaeosaurus' skull. And that, this, that I think it's probably some kind of Thessalosaur. Th- Thessalosaur. Yeah, that's probably. running. I and have... that looks also awesome. It's beautiful. Th- th- right. This is frustrating to me because this is one of the most beautiful shots in the trailer. And I don't think we know anything about the two animals to pick. <laughs> is he going to make it? Something... No. He doesn't look like he's going to make it. Do you see his eyes? His eye? <laughs> There's fear in that. This is not the what? eye of a man who's going to make it. And that's a killer's face in the back left there. That's actually <laughs> yeah, quite... Point. That's really menacing looking. That's a great, uh, great yeah. uh, character design. He's for the a little bit Christian Bale in American Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> We've been trying Something to reach you regarding your car's extent of warranty. Parts of Antarctica, including where I think these fossils come from, were at about 60 degrees south latitude. So we're talking like, I think, about modern New Zealand. And when there were no ice caps. Yeah. Right. So we're talking seasonal cold, um, for sure. I could see this being like a a very very late winter, possibly early fall scene where the yeah. where the sun's just starting to pop up and it's like sure. lakes could still freeze. Yeah, probably. That just, yeah. These are very well. I mean, they're they're not far enough. Trees. This I don't think this island where the where because these are found on James Ross Island, I think. Um, I don't think that island was far enough south that you would really have perpetual darkness mm, like okay. you're gonna have limited oh, yeah. but don't you need to be above the arctic circle to actually have perpetual darkness in the winter or below the antarctic circle in this case right what i'm saying is like 60 degrees latitude like we're talking yeah. about like northern we're talking about like alaska where it's going to be like dark for a lot of the day but it's not it's not constant yeah yeah this isn't like pitch black or anything but right for six straight months right oh my god we're only halfway through this video uh huh. That's the skeleton crew trick. All right, Jesus next. Christ! I I like I'm. It's midnight. We're gonna. I finish don't this care. Part. We gotta just go. We gotta finish this. All right. So, All right. Then Xorus again is chasing some ornithomimosaurs. Cool. Beautiful environment. Love the Alaska type environment. Um, he is going to die. In fact, we <laughs> almost watch him die. Yes. <laughs> this rest, is like in power king. This is like <laughs> news footage of some event where they're like. We have edited it to not show you the exact moment the person is killed, but we're going to let you see exactly as what's much as happened. possible. Look at look at that look. That's he's great. he's really running to wow that leap and that's a big old step. He's taken big steps. Okay, um, we have the unnamed titanosaur migrating through a canyon. Great, looks neat. More more heroes. Oh, yeah. the well, dinosaur my, what... we can't talk about. <laughs> You can't talk about this. Move on. I'm just going to say that I got exactly what I wanted from my the thing I wanted in the last video. Yeah. Which is this, but we can't say what it is. God, this environment is well, awesome. Does it? I want to see if it. I want to see if it shows the close up of the face because I noticed something that I I don't I haven't heard anyone drag on about pedantically on Twitter yet. That's a is different like house or if it's if it's what you're talking about. Why are we not allowed to talk about this? No, that's joke. not. Yeah, that's not. No, oh. this is the one we can't talk about. We can talk about this one. I don't know what it is, but it's not the one we can't talk about. Okay, we're 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 explaining a couple things at the same time here. One, Edmontosaurus on Twitter for a while was oh, apparently oh, yeah, in okay. error. Being yeah, yeah. yes, there we go. Explaining that. Two, Amelia, I'm pretty sure that this the close up that you're talking about comes later on, and that's a different hadrosaur. It's not this green one. It's green. It's another. Green it's one. a different green I one. Thought, okay. <laughs> yeah. And but, it's suck, they, no, it's going to come up like right next, and they they cut it in such a way that it, it tricks you. Yes, but it's it's a different green one. But uh, so we talked about the environment here. This is what the Hell Creek looked like. Mm-hmm. Just they took a camera Looks back great. in time, and this is what it looked like. And you can actually, in the distance, see Adam Driver with a young girl who doesn't speak his language for no narrative reason, right there, <laughs> and he's just obliterating everything in his path. He will shoot as many dinosaurs as he has to to walk seven miles. Oh, sh**. Feels a new frog. Sorry, okay. I hit the wrong Some button. Cold I'm having Groundhog Day feelings. Another cold gentleman. If you want to hear us talk more, more about Bill Zabufo, check out our other trailer reaction. Indeed. Sorry, I hit the wrong buttons, guys. Um, all right, here we are. I'm back. 
Okay. Um, so this we guy. have it's the un- the unknown Chordonton. Well, from the from what it from what it seems to be uh, in some of the other materials. This doesn't seem to be a different troodontid from the other one. This it's looks a like a juvenile. Yeah. Yeah, I, I believe that. So it's a juvenile of what? Pectinodon. A tooth? Mm-hmm. <laughs> a tooth taxon. Well, tooths have babies. Well, l- look, at all, from, look at from... all Look at all them tooths. A lot of tooths. It's got a lot That's of tooths. That's how you know there it's a so Many complete and great troodontid fossils. Um... Well, no, I wouldn't say there are so many complete and great trojans. No, there classes. aren't. There are approximately four. <laughs> but so what there... about all those? I, I guess in the late Cretaceous, yeah. Well, I mean, there's Almas. There's IGM one hundred eleven twenty six. There's Gobi Venator. And there's Sinovenator. Well, no, Sinovenator takes you to, to the early Cretaceous, right? And so, oh, like, oh, I mean, in the early Cretaceous, there's like a half dozen, right? No, but in terms of late Cretaceous, there might be three or four. Oh, so Anthoides has a nice skull. Xanabazar has a nice skull. Um, but Pectinodon has teeth, and that's what we get. But what this one does have is a good shot of the palette right there. Oh my oh, god. Yeah. Alex, review the palette. Oh no! <laughs> that looks like a septated coanal groove. That is something you would see in a crown bird and probably not a theropod in which the Kuena are two discrete separate openings farther up in the fade. Well, at least it's catching a fly. <laughs> I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to say for Tom. certain, but that, yeah, it looks like they're doing the, it's a theropod. So it has a bird palette. Mm-hmm. That's sad, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm, maybe, maybe it's a trick of the light. Let's hope cute little guy Speaking, so yeah this is yeah this that's so cool this is a different awesome. hadrosaur look at its beak we know mm-hmm. it had that what is this am i Te- just it's tethys hadros so cool this is tethys okay. hadros okay it's, so a, it's an italian like me uh, yeah hence the hence the know. face <laughs> it's the long snout <laughs> okay then it's just something i didn't know about yeah, this... like Christopher oh, from The Sopranos, wait, this hadrosaur could what? smoke a cigarette in the this rain is under an umbrella. An animal that lived like 15 million years earlier. No, it's Lake Mistricti, isn't it? It's well, Wik- Wikipedia says 80 million years. Oh, oh never mind. Never but mind. It also, I saw another thing that said a range of 80 to 66, so maybe we don't know well. I, I think it's an unconstrained age. A lot of the Italian, okay. Um, Italy's government is unfortunately not very in Wait a favor second. of paleontological I think Alison, research. I think a certain person on Twitter expressed his uh, frustration to me that this is not an animal that would have been alive during the Cretaceous, uh, during the Mastrigian. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe when we review Looks these real episodes, cool, we should bring Alessandro on and have him express his feelings about an animal he's worked yeah. a lot on. Also, someone pointed out that this is these babies here Maybe not necessarily one of these exact two babies, but a baby of this species is the gift that the one Hatchogopteryx is giving to the other. Shit. So um, be prepared for destruction. Be prepared for infant destruction. Season two of Prehistoric Planet, more baby death. Prepare for trouble and make it double. Oh. <laughs> two babies, two Hatchogop, whatever, pterosaurs. <laughs> I think Tethys Hadros is cool because um, like that weird flanged beak thing that it has is something that we're seeing a little bit more of in some better preserved other hadrosaurs is that um, I'm pretty sure that that structure is seen in the bone, but um, uh, keratin can be rather extreme on those beaks. And that's being shown more and more, which I think is rad. And what I also think is rad is this is a real shot of a real animal that they actually got in real life (laughs) as well. This yeah. is the realest shit I've ever seen. I, I'm glad you feel that way. You don't? I don't know why, but for some reason, everything in the water to me in this show, I can just like, is is more obvious CG than not. And like, I don't blame them for that. It's harder to do. But yeah. I'm really glad that, that I'm really, really glad that other people, like, that I'm not, that that's not the main view. I'm really, I don't the- want to diminish others' happiness. 
No, yeah, I usually agree great. with you. This is the only one where I completely yeah. feel the other way. But I mean, I think this is one of the more convincing shots in the show. And it is, it is really good. It is also yeah. most likely proof that yes, indeed, they did remake the entire show after they saw our reaction to the teaser trailer. Because I mentioned that I wanted to see Antarctic Elasmosaurs, and it looks like we're getting Antarctic Elasmosaurs. <laughs> right. We have a tremendous amount of influence over the producers of Prehistoric Planet. I like this shot in particular because it reminds me of the screaming eels in Princess Pride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, I see. And I'm like, yes, good. Oh, it does. Um, what okay. I think sells this shot to me is not the texture on the animals, of course, but it's the interaction with the water. Yes. Which is like yeah, Avatar the really, Way of Water quality. Like really yeah. look 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 at the little like like bubble surface depression before the little one on the left comes up that then breaks. Oh yeah. Like look at that. That is yeah. Chef's Kiss perfection. And just yeah. the, the water rolling, uh it's very good. But mm -hmm. I'm excited about a creature in the next shot. Yes. Ostraptor. It's Velociraptor again. Alex, no, this is Ostraptor. No, it's not. No, it's Velociraptor. It's not? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, sorry. Sorry, sorry, Scott. That, sorry, Scott. Look at that meaty hooked claw. Uh, that is a good boy. So what about the palette? Tell me about the palette. It's, it's honestly kind of hard to figure out what the where the quantal grooves are. I like, think it's one long one. middle one. It looks like, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like it might be another long middle one, which would be unfortunate, but hard to tell. Uh, if we if that egg wasn't there, we might be able to figure out what species. Of, uh, I mean, nothing. We, we might be able to figure out nothing based I on that nothing. tooth count. Nothing at oh, all. Oh, babies! You're, you're right. It is the Velociraptor. Oh Sorry. my god! Oh, That's so good, good. guys. Goodness gracious! Oh my god! So it is worth noting that we have no idea what a baby Velociraptor looks like, which means that so I I'm, can say they looked like that. Yes, <laughs> I've decided. It is decided. It's also probably right. I mean, they've they've taken a Velociraptor and babyfied it, and that's what babies look like. I that's would... the end result of my PhD. Babies look like babies. <laughs> Have you ever seen I a would baby? Have you thought that they look like a baby? baby? And then be mauled by the adult when I couldn't properly care for it anymore, just because that how cute these <laughs> things are. Absolutely. They're adorable. Absolute baby energy. Oh, it's a God. dromaeosaur. <laughs> we have no fossil dromaeosaurs, like Jim, Jimbo said. No fossil dromaeosaurs. <laughs> no fossil baby fossil dromaeosaurs. Baby dromaeosaurs. <laughs> I am very hungry. Next. Moving on. <laughs> Isisaurus again. Hey, guy. He's, He's falling. Up the hill. He's falling. Help Dumoxies. Him. Someone oh, help, God, help the baby Zalmoxes. Uh, Somebody please help him. One of, one of my favorite things that came out of this was just the meme of uh, Pod the Pyroraptor from yes. Dinosaur Planet drifting on driftwood towards Hattag Island and the baby Zalmoxes drifting away from Hattag Island just passing each other. Um, he's screaming. He's frightened. He needs help. He's he's escaping the Hattagopteryx. It's like Frankenstein rafting away at the end of the book. Look it's at a bad way to escape something that flies. Yeah, we got yeah. Some weird stuff that's going on here. He, he's he's realizing the error of his ways. Look at all these. Look at all these ammonites. This yeah, is great. Not, like awesome. I can't wait to see these things. I I love that they're showing a bunch of heteromorph ones as well. Like look at all these. So yeah, the, the heteromorph ammonites for people who don't know. Uh, especially also people watching this channel because we talk a lot about vertebrate paleontology. But um, a typical ammonite has that kind of like classic snail shell spiral and the heteromorph ones uh, look like this where they kind of just look like drunk toddler scribbles or like that or like that uh, paperclip looking guy there. They're, they're really weird. I thought you are trying to open the Western Interior Seaway. Do you need some help? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so who's this? Oh well, this is T Rex again. I hope it's and fighting bird. It's fighting bird. The standout thing in this show for me is the foghorn. Can we have the foghorn again? Oh yes, I we can't can. hear it because my laptop's muted for this recording. Most wonderful sound. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which it, it's great. like, can we please get a super cut of the lighthouse that every time the foghorn's going, it's just the Quetzalcoatlus sound just screaming. Well, what, what was it's one of the dream sequences from yeah. What was yeah. pointed out to me uh, after the last season of Prehistoric Planet was that the 
I thought that the Quetzalcoatlus noises were incredibly standout in that show. I remember the first time I heard one, it made that foghorn noise. I was like, that's insane. That is such a unique sound. Uh, it's a chicken pitch down. <laughs> I love that. And it's really cool. And it's so good. <laughs> and as I suspect this Tyrannosaurus Rex is going to learn soon, it's bad luck to kill a seabird. Bad luck to kill a seabird. <laughs> He's screaming um, hark he right here. He's, yeah. Hark Triton. Um, None of you have watched that. Oh, f- off! <laughs> I've no, watched. Oh, except for Jimbo. Sorry, I've watched I the, lighthouse. the lighthouse. Okay, only Dalton. Dalton and I, I was saw just the lighthouse Dalton. together. Yeah, I'm just yelling at Dalton. Okay, so um, I'm not allowed to reference things. There's only seen. one thing to mention about the Tyrannosaurus. Um, yes. People have claimed that it is not Tyrannosaurus rex, but a different species, based on several unpublished as of yet unpublished attempts to erect new species within the genus tyrannosaurus those are do not seem to be bearing out to my knowledge um there's not a lot of evidence for it other than a geographic range gap which doesn't mean it's a new species um there seem to be some coloration differences that might mean that this is what it's supposed to be i highly doubt it i think they're just showing variation and are trying to show that like this isn't hank or one of the tyrannosaur individuals from the first season it's a new one that's it. He's I living down believe- south Texas way. Sorry, Amelia. Also, it's Alamosaurus. Whoa, whoa. What are you saying, Amelia? I just said I can't believe you actually called it Hank on Ironic. I, I, I'm a little him. disappointed that you did. I'm I, sorry. We'll cut the bit so that I don't call him Hank. Whoa, look. <laughs> anti, Anti-quad launch. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they launch. <laughs> he's, doing, he's doing six skateboard tricks. Um. <laughs> oh man well that One that's hug. this trailer but done. we are no we're in luck that we have other we have other bits of prehistoric planet that released today and have no sound and have no sound but it just shows us a little bit more of the animals that we saw in season one and a couple better looks at some things that we only saw as still, cool. sc- as still as still screenshots in uh, previously. Like we have Mashikasaurus here. We have the which yeah should be like I I don't know I, I I don't love how not feathery those small ceratosaurians are. Yeah, but like I get why because like if you're gonna make a dinosaur not feathery, make it be a ceratosaurine or an albertosaurine. Uh, sorry, a, or an abelosaurine. Carnotaurus, I get, but like a, a small noosaur, like an animal that's converging on basically like small toothless silurosaurs in every way. Mm-hmm. That's within yeah. a clade that we know like primitively had filaments. I mean, I, and yes. I think this thing does. They're just very wispy and small. Yeah. But again, the skin texture looks fantastic. I feel like I could touch. I, this I love the eyelids. The eyelids yeah. are are amazing. We have another shot of the Mongolian sauropods. Great, cool. Which seem to be Good. two different species as well. I or think they're babies. showing a mixed species assemblage, which is something we know they did from yeah, fossil yeah. footprints. Yeah, rad. Very cool. More um, more elasmosaurs of some sort. Hey, Conchoraptor's back. Uh, no, Carithoraptor. Uh, sorry, Carithoraptor. Oh my god, I can't believe after all the work I've done on Overaptorosaurs, you would do that to me. I'm so sorry, um, Jimbo. Hey, is any of it published? <laughs> it's, wow. Uh, it's delayed again. Um, uh, but for good reasons. Yeah. So, yeah. Carithoraptor's back. I like him. In a, like in a Jimbo, different environment, is which is fun. Jimbo, would this crest have been so keratinous? No. <laughs> but that's okay. You mean it's not like... Our friend Todd Green could probably tell us that it's not like... Uh, it's uh, very, it's it was not. Probably, it's very different than the, from this. It's, it's a very different kind of structure, and I hope one day I'll be able to talk about what I think it is. Um, so but moving what on. What do you think it is? Moving on. I'm not talking about that now. Oh, you bitch. No, I'm we talking got, questions. Zamoxies. They're smooching. They're it's very cute. Very adorable. They love each other. That. The the love of things that don't know they're about to be eaten by Hatsagopteryx in what I assume is this <laughs> The scene. next shot. Oh my god. Here they come. The uh, army this, of death. This is prehistoric prehistoric planets uh, doing the, the f***ing uh, tripod scene. Oh my god, they are. From War yeah. of the Worlds. 
But like speaking of honk, genuinely, this is horrifying. Just like this, <laughs> these giraffe-sized things hunting you from above the tops of the young trees. Like amazing. This is so right. cool. It looks. They look so cool. I'm so yeah. excited for this. Absolutely. More babe. babies. More babies. Baby oh, I will steal them. Did My you see honk. the one trip right here? Yes. He just like stumbles. Oh and he's like, oh, oh, there he goes. He is so cute. And here we go. Now. Croc time. Ladies and gentlemen. The, the star of the show. Him. He's a champion. And he's, he's so kicking. Angry. Fighting okay. off a Majogasaurus. That, that Although, little kicking. Hold on, that scale seems kind of weird to me. In what way? Maybe. I think Samusukas is even smaller than that. It's well, not. It's, it's not that much smaller than that. Majungasaurus like, is a lot smaller than people think. Yep. Yeah. Is it really? Yes. It's pretty yeah, small. Yeah, so they have a mounted one at Stony Brook, which is where I did my master's and near where I currently am. And, um, it's not even as tall as a person at the hips. It's yep. it's not a very tall animal. Oh wow! It's yeah. not that oh, tall. It's like like not even six. It's like six meters long. Okay, never mind. That that could totally work. Mm -hmm. Have you ever? I don't know if any of you, anyone else's dogs do this, but like my especially my male dog. I have my a bunch of Boston Terriers, so they're about Sinusuka size. When they get excited or are trying to show off, he just kind of kicks. He just like just kicks his back legs around and that's exactly what this is making me think of and i i am enjoying it so very much see so he's I, got like go ahead uh i was gonna say it, it's reminding me a whole lot of the clips you see in nature documentaries of like honey badgers fighting off a, a pride alliance it is in fact reminding me of that a lot mm. look at him i like the majungasaurus also looks great it looks fantastic honestly yeah, yeah. majungasaurus yeah, yeah. is oh, such oh. a weird dinosaur like it is it's a sausage I'll it's essentially like a salamander okay. on stilts <laughs> yeah With stupid little arms yeah it's disgusting and it's also and a unicorn really see it. but the simasuchus maybe is there going to be a better shot later this uh, there is yes yeah. okay then i'll save my comment okay Actually, you can see it really well in that lateral view, but they have these really large scales on their arms and legs. Oh, you'll see it a lot these, better. They're, they're these appendicular osteoderms uh, that they nail here. Well, we'll, yeah. we'll see it even better in a minute. Um, so we do that. Swimmy. More ammonites. Swimmy. And more swimmy. swimmy. Great. Hey! Now, oh, this Roger is beautiful. The oh, Sith Lord of Bellasaur. That God, is one it's of so the most pretty. Beautiful things I've ever seen. Ooh, do we think the coloration is because it's like evolved to camouflage, like besides lava flows? Because it's from like where the Deccan traps are. I mean, I don't know what they're going to say about it, but that's clearly what they're evoking, and I mm -hmm. really like it. It's so cool. It's so cool. And you can see, it's hard to see because this is Twitter and the video quality is hot garbage. But right here, there is a tiny little baby Isosaurus that is... <laughs> oh, no! Like, Get out of there! Snapping at. You can see him just like oh, God, just miss that. it right there. Yeah. Look at him go! Why? Yeah, it's so oh, little I wonder if this is going to be evoking like the scene of the snakes. Yep, the I think it is. Oh. Which and, is very comical because in that scene... The snakes are all big. Yep, just like... Whoop. And whoop, also, whoop. with that momentum, this Abelosaurus is going over that cliff. Yeah. He, he's he's going to die. <laughs> this, is, this is a... He's going to take is, a tumble. This is soon to be... In, in contrast with Majungasaurus, Abel, uh, 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 Rajasaurus is a large Abelosaurus. And he's going like, to wind up like Looney Tunes, like head directly in the chasm, sticking up, it, kicking. Imagine, imagine throwing yourself into like a bunch of volcanic glass, which is what looks like is on the other side of that rock for what is a, like essentially a cheese that you drop across the couch. What would you do for a Klondike? <laughs> in terms of nutritional value. <laughs> They're like the. Um, I've you know, done more for less, Alex. This is also, if memory serves, one of, if not like the first depiction of Rajasaurus in Paleo Media. I think so. Yeah, which is That's super sweet. cool because it was actually, skill. it was described by one of my old paleontology teachers at Michigan, um, Jeff Wilson. Ammonites. I don't Ammonites. think they do yeah, the yeah, yeah. but that's fine. And then 
Hey, the they Carter listen, Alex. Alex. Well, I'll be honest. This is this is some kind of croc. I the Simasuchus was them listening. Well, th- you well, said you wanted more crocs. Yeah, but the Simasuchus was what I meant, and they gave it to me, and this is fine. This is just a living croc. icing this on is the also cake. Cool. Here we go. Oh, here he is. God. Here, here we go. He's trundling. So yeah, they, it looks like they got all of the kind of these big. It has a lot of osteoderms, and the head looks correctly proportioned too, relative to the bod. Mm-hmm. It looks just like looks, the one in the Creation Museum. There's a couple others. Yeah, it looks just like the one in the Creation Museum. Oh my God! Look at his little soul. feet. Look at. Look at him. Look! Look at! So look, look how good he is. Uh, He's hard. Simasuchus Clarki, named after James Clark, uh, who was my master's advisor um, and the best uh, at paleontology, who is currently working. So He's an amazing, amazing scientist. Oh my God, this is so cute. So <laughs> I'm enamored. And then we wrap it up. All right. With Rex. Yeah, and, and that's kind of what I meant. Like, it has a slightly different color scheme. Yeah, screen. that looked kind of different, like a lot different. Yeah. I, I don't know if they're going for something here, or maybe it's covered in blood. Maybe. I mean, oh. it also could just be, like, regional, like, even, like, not a different species, but, like, you know. Individual. Like regional, <laughs> regional populational differences, like, like the different kind of rattlesnakes in the American West that are variously considered, you know, species, subspecies even. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. So anyway, that's not all we're of excited. the content that's about Prehistoric Planet 2, but it's 12.15 a.m. And it's all we're Alex talking about. has not eaten f- food yet today. And I have to make a fourth year review for 11.30 tomorrow morning. I, right. So that I, is the amount of Prehistoric Planet 2 content we're going to talk about for this video. I, we will I be think that the genuinely series. the only other things that we missed are we have better shot of the Ostroraptor. Right. Don't care. Which, long. Which, it, it, it's it's, long. it's eating a gar, which is fun. Do care? That's fun. Um, we have the Zyphactinus. right? Which we'll probably cover in another video about right. the the show at this time, because yeah. there are apparently problems with it, and we'll go through all of what they are. But none of us are fish people. So, guys, that's what we've got for you today. Um, we are really looking forward to the release of this series, and we're planning to do a couple more episodes about Prehistoric Planet. So sit tight, keep watching. Thank you guys, as always, for the support of our channel. Remember to like and subscribe and click the little bell to get notifications when we release new content because we are starting a lot of new stuff that we think you're really going to want to see. Thank you, as always, for watching. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Good night. Alex, you can leave now if you must.